This training is developed by the Montana Asthma Control Program, a program within the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services. Today I'm going to talk to you about what you need to know about keeping children with asthma safe and healthy in the child care setting. For this training, you will need the Asthma Education for Child Care Providers booklet that accompanies this teaching. The booklet is available free of charge on our website, and a hard copy will be sent to you upon completion. The first 30 pages of this booklet were originally developed by the San Diego Asthma Initiative. With their permission, we've added Montana-specific forms on pages 31 through 44. These forms were developed by the Montana Child Care Licensing Bureau and can be used in your child care practice to document the health needs of a child with asthma and keep track of their medications. Please follow along in your resource guide as we move through the presentation. Before we get started, think back on any personal experiences you have had with asthma. Do you have asthma? What about anyone in your family? Over the years, have you had children with the disease in your child care practice? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you are not alone. Asthma is the most common chronic disease in childhood. Approximately 7.1% of Montana children have asthma, a total of 15,400 under the age of 18. Young children, like the ones in your care, often have the most severe cases of asthma. This slide, with Montana data from 2014, shows that young children aged 0 through 9 are hospitalized at some of the highest rates of asthma hospitalizations compared to all other age groups in the state, outside of people 65 and older. This is because the lungs of young children are still developing and vulnerable to more severe outcomes if asthma symptoms occur, especially if the child has a respiratory infection like a cold or the flu. Though asthma affects children of all ages, certain groups are more likely to have the disease than others. As we'll talk about later, asthma can be triggered by things like dust, mold, and tobacco smoke. So children from low-income families and those that live with smokers or have substandard living conditions are more likely to have asthma. As I spoke about before, young children in Montana have more severe asthma outcomes, and before puberty, boys are more likely to have asthma than girls. Data from the Montana Medicaid program shows that American Indian children may be more likely to have asthma than whites in the state, and because there is a genetic component to the disease, children whose parents or other close relatives have asthma or allergies may also be at higher risk. So what is asthma? Asthma is a chronic disease for which there is no cure. However, asthma can be controlled. A child with well-controlled asthma will not have debilitating symptoms that keep him or her out of child care and should be able to participate in all activities. To see what goes on in the lungs of a child with asthma, look at the picture on the left side of the screen. The left side of the figure shows a normal lung and the right side of the figure is an asthmatic lung. With asthma, there are two processes occurring in the lungs. First, in the airways, there is underlying inflammation, meaning that the wall of the airways is thicker than normal. This is the silent component of the disease because it is an ongoing disease process and does not always cause the patient to have symptoms like wheezing or coughing. When a child with asthma has an asthma attack, the smooth muscle around the airways clamps down, causing the airways to narrow even further. This is the noisy component of the disease that makes a child have active asthma symptoms. So, how can you tell if a child with asthma is having an attack? It is important to know what the early signs of an asthma attack are and act quickly to help the child before the attack becomes more severe. The early signs of an attack are cough, wheezing, breathing faster than usual, feeling tired, chest tightness runny nose, or scratchy throat. It is important to remember that coughing can be a sign of an asthma attack. In fact, in some children, coughing will be their only asthma symptom. So what should you do if you witness the early signs of an asthma attack for a child in your care? The answer to this question is outlined on page 5 of the resource guide. First, administer the child's quick relief or rescue medication. Second, consult the child's asthma action plan. Third, monitor the child to make sure they improve. Also, speak calmly to the child and help them move away from anything that might have triggered the asthma attack. Have them sit in a quiet location as you monitor them 
to ensure that they are improving. If an asthma attack is not treated properly or caught early, the symptoms can progress and become a health emergency. The emergency warning signs of an asthma attack are breathing very quickly, hunched over, severe wheezing, nostrils open wider with each breath, hard time walking or talking, skin on ribs pulled tight, lips, skin, or fingernails are blue, quick relief medication isn't working. If any child in your care with asthma has these symptoms, you should follow the steps outlined on page 6 of the resource guide. First, call the child's health care provider or 911 to get medical help right away. Refer to the child's asthma action plan in the red or emergency zone for specific instructions and administer his or her rescue medication. Keep track of how many puffs of an inhaler you have given the child. If indicated in the asthma action plan, you can give more doses of the rescue inhaler after 5 to 10 minutes if the first dose is not working. Now that we've covered what to do if a child has an asthma attack, let's talk about what causes these attacks. The main cause of an asthma attack are things in the environment that caused the child's asthma to flare up. For each child, these triggers will be different, but a few common ones are represented on this slide, including diesel exhaust, tobacco smoke, pollen, animal dander, cleaning products, and cold air. On pages 7 to 12 of your resource guide, the various asthma triggers are covered in depth with practical tips on how to reduce or eliminate them from your child care environment. The resource guide divides the asthma triggers into irritants, like tobacco smoke and cleaners, allergens, like mold and pets and other things such as respiratory infections, exercise, and cold weather. Here are a few practical tips for creating an asthma-friendly environment. If you care for a child with asthma, find out which triggers affect them. Keep your indoor environment free from smoke and strong sprays. When possible, clean surfaces with warm water and mild soap. Minimize stuffed toys, upholstered chairs and carpets, etc. Keep furry animals out of indoor environments. Ensure that children wash their hands and bundle up if it's cold. Allow children to warm up before exercise. Carefully monitor children with asthma, especially during exercise, cold weather, and allergy season. Because asthma triggers are unique to each person with asthma, and because each child care environment is also unique, we recommend that you do your own assessment using the resource guide to help you as you seek to make simple changes that will make your environment healthier for the children in your care. Another important step to controlling asthma is ensuring that the children in your care are using their asthma medications correctly. There are two kinds of medications for asthma. Remember how we said that there are two processes going on in the lungs of a child with asthma? Airway inflammation and smooth muscle squeezing? The two types of drugs for asthma address these two symptoms. The first type of drug we will discuss are rescue medications. These drugs are taken in response to symptoms during an attack. All children with asthma need access to these. Relax the smooth muscle squeezing in the airway. Safe, effective. These medications most often come in an inhaler. However, some young children may use a nebulizer for their rescue medication. Rescue medication is the most important kind of asthma drug for child care providers to be aware of because all children with asthma should have access to their rescue medications at all times in case of an attack. The second type of asthma drugs are controller medications. These drugs are taken to prevent symptoms, reduce inflammation in the airways, address the silent component of the disease, taken daily, usually at home, most common inhaled corticosteroids, safe, effective. To help a child with asthma take their medications, you may need to know how to use a number of devices. The most important device is the rescue inhaler, also known as a metered dose inhaler. For young children, it's best to use the rescue inhaler with a spacer. To help a child use an inhaler with a spacer, remove the cap from the inhaler. Shake the inhaler. Put the inhaler in the spacer. Have the child put his or her lips around the spacer mouthpiece and exhale through their nose. 
Press the inhaler and coach the child to take a deep, slow breath for five seconds. And hold breath for ten seconds. Exhale. Wait at least one minute before administering a second puff, if indicated. You should also know how to assist a child to use their rescue inhaler without a spacer. The steps to do this are covered in the Asthma Education for Child Care Providers Resource Guide. The Asthma Education for Child Care Providers Guide covers how to help a child using an MDI without a spacer. You should also know how to assist a child to use their rescue inhaler without a spacer. Remove the cap and shake the inhaler. Tilt your head back and breathe out. Put the inhaler mouthpiece between the teeth with tongue underneath it. Compress the canister. Breathe in slowly for three to five seconds. Hold breath for five to ten seconds. Exhale. Wait at least one minute and repeat puff as recommended by healthcare provider. Finally, you may be asked to use a nebulizer to give a child asthma medications. If you are required, ask the child's parent and or health care provider to give you specific instructions on how to use the machine. The resource guide covers general tips for using a nebulizer and gives advice on how to clean inhalers, spacers, and nebulizers. For children with more severe asthma, you may be asked to help a child use a peak flow meter to monitor their disease. Have the child stand up and position the indicator at the bottom of the numbers. Place the mouthpiece between lips and teeth, forming a tight seal. Have the child take a deep breath in and exhale quickly and strongly through the mouthpiece. Their exhalation will move the indicator. Read the number at the position of the indicator. Repeat again to get the most accurate reading and clean the mouthpiece after reading. If the child is in the yellow or red zone after using the peak flow meter, follow their asthma action plan for administering rescue medication. Now that you know how to use these asthma devices, remember these simple tips on how to create an asthma-friendly medication environment for children with asthma. Know which medication each child is taking and how to administer them. Have every parent of a child with asthma fill out a medication authorization log. Know the difference between the rescue and controller medications and when they are used. Learn how to assist the child to use the medication devices properly. As you can tell, if a child in your care has asthma, there is a lot to worry about. What are their specific triggers? What medications are they taking and when? What should be done if a child has an attack? To ensure that everyone, including the child and their parent, as well as your staff, are on the same page, be sure to fill out an asthma action plan. Have you ever seen or used these plans in your daycare? An asthma action plan includes simple instructions about what to do if and when a child with asthma has symptoms. An example asthma action plan can be found in the resource guide. To conclude, there are eight suggestions that summarize what you can do to create an asthma-friendly child care environment. First, identify which children have asthma. This is an important first step. Think to yourself, how do you systematically track which of the children in your care have this common chronic disease? Once you know who has asthma, work with the parents and child to fill out the special needs health care plan and asthma action plan. This plan should include specific information about the child's asthma triggers and symptoms and how they should be treated if they have an attack. Familiarize all of your staff about these important details. Always have quick relief medication available for all children with asthma and fill out the medication authorization form with parents. As I stated earlier, ensure that this life-saving medication is stored securely in a location that is easily accessible to all staff and that there is a plan in place for bringing the medication along when the child leaves your facility for a field trip or other activity. If you notice that a child with asthma in your care is having frequent asthma symptoms, report this to his or her parents. Remember, with the proper environmental controls and medication, asthma can be controlled. If a child is experiencing frequent symptoms, they should see a healthcare professional to improve their treatment plan. 
Whenever you administer an asthma medication, be sure to fill out a medication administration log and inform the child's parents. Treat child care environment to reduce asthma triggers using the suggestions in the resource guide. And finally, teach the other children in your care about asthma. I often hear stories about children who are ostracized because other kids worry that their disease is contagious or dangerous. With a little education, you can help a child with asthma feel normal and accepted by their peers. I would like to conclude with a word about severe allergies. Though asthma and allergies are not the same thing, many children with allergies also have asthma and vice versa. Both asthma and severe allergies are on the rise among children in the United States. Children can be severely allergic to peanuts and other tree nuts, shellfish, bee stings, MSG, and latex, among other things. When a child has a severe allergic reaction, the signs include flushing, hives, itching, anxiety, and an irregular pulse and breathing patterns. If a child shows the signs of anaphylaxis, you should call 911 immediately and use his or her EpiPen to administer epinephrine. If you're interested in learning more about anaphylaxis and allergies, the Montana Asthma Control Program also has an allergies and anaphylaxis training for school personnel and child care providers. This concludes our discussion of asthma in the child care environment. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us. Our program has free educational resources about asthma that can be given to parents and children. You can also go to our website or the DPHHS Daycare Licensing Bureau website to access electronic versions of the forms included in the resource guide. Do not forget to take your post-class assessment. Thanks for your time and interest.